Hello everyone, Aimer back with another Mission Impossible video. This time I thought I'd mix things up a little bit and add to the list of the best ofs uh, that I'm hoping to expand. And as I do, I keep getting more and more ideas and also looking for uh, feedback from the community about these. I've already done one for the guest female agents, already done one for the best of Peter Lupus. So I decided to shift gears a little bit and go back to the main cast for a little bit and talk about some of the female agents that have appeared as uh, part of the mainline cast over the years. And I'm including both the revival as well as the original series for that. In going back over the episodes and the reviews, I found some interesting trends. Because of the nature of the show, I already discussed with the uh, guest female agents about how, uh, you know, because Mission Impossible is a show that is geared towards, you know, what is, I guess, would traditionally be considered male gender roles, the female agent tends to be kind of unique. However, just as often, I found that the female agent can often just be a placeholder just an extra person to be there for the sake of being there. And all of them, absolutely all of them, fall prey to that from time to time. In some cases, they just take on a role because it just makes more sense for a woman to fill a particular role. And, and, and she's just part of the team for the purposes of the mission where a woman is required in, in that position. In some cases, we have female guest stars or incidental characters as part of the story. When that happens, the female main agent tends to take a very reduced role so as not to overshadow the guest star. There are a couple of interesting exceptions, as we'll see. Also, in a lot of episodes, the female agent tends to be involved in the initial stages of the, the con game or the setup that the IMF is trying to do. So in many uh, episodes, we'll see that, you know, she's there working somebody in the direction that the plot and the mission requires. And then towards the end, almost disappears or really takes a back seat for the closing action. In fairness, this often happens with the men too, especially in early seasons with Willie and Barney, where we would have uh, Jim or Dan as the team leader alongside with Roll in Hand, you know, kind of closing out the episode. Doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen more than you think. I'm going to give you guys the overall ranking of the, the uh, uh, for the ladies in terms of the quality of their body of work on the show. I don't think there's going to be any surprises here. I, w I was thinking about making this a full video, but I thought it might make more sense this way, just because there's no, no surprises here, and it's not going to be a very uh, exhaustive list. Number seven, no surprise, somebody has to be at the bottom of the list, Terry Markwell. And I'm going to talk more about that here. I'm going to start with the ladies who were either kind of fill-ins or didn't last a full season for whatever reason. Number six, Lee Merriweather. Number five, Barbara Anderson. Number four, Leslie Warren. Number three, Linda Day George. Number two, Jane Badler. And number one, obviously, Barbara Bain. So let's start from the bottom of the list. I'll talk a little bit more about the ladies who didn't last a full season. Beginning with the lovely Terry Markwell, who was just plainly a fish out of water on this show. The final episode that she was in, The Fortune, where, you know, she was out and replaced with Jane Battler, showed that I think that there were no hard feelings. I think, uh, I believe both sides just realized that it was time to move on. I had tried to contact Ms. Markwell the way that I have been, you know, I was able actually to get in touch with Peter Lupus. So far, I've been unsuccessful. I have not been able to find anything online or anything in any kind of research that I could possibly think of 
where she has talked about her time on the show or anybody else has talked about her time on the show. So I can only assume that she just doesn't want to. I'll keep trying because you never know. In most of the episodes that Casey Randall was in, 12 in all, she is just literally a placeholder, as I mentioned. She's just there for the sake of being there. She may have some dialogue. She may do the odd thing here or there. But she simply does not fit in to the main plot. There are a smattering of episodes, four of them that I could see, where she kind of goes into the category of she's there, she's part of the plot, she plays the role of the female agent within the confines of the mission, and it's okay, I guess. Those four that I identified would be the system, where she plays, a, you know, a, a gambler who, you know, pushes the plot forward a little bit, especially towards the beginning, then kind of takes a backseat towards the end. There was also uh, episode five from that season, The Legacy. Same thing here. There's one particular role for the female agent uh, in, uh, interacting with a banker, that's the role she fills. There's episode eight, The Pawn, where she plays a magician's assistant, has some dialogue, does a few things. Again, nothing spectacular. And then there's episode 10, The Lions, where she, where she plays a reporter. Same deal, she's got some dialogue, nothing to write home about. Terry Markwell as Casey Randall did have two episodes in which I would say she does get above average screen time and a good role in the plot. One of them would be episode 7 from the Revival series, The Cattle King. She gets a role to be a foil to the antagonist, Douglas Matthews, who has a reputation as a lady killer. So it just makes sense for the female agent to kind of take the role and, you know, start the process of working the antagonist. The other episode would be episode 1, the, pi uh, the pilot episode called Killer. She has a decent role as the killer's contact. She actually gets some action scenes. It, I mentioned in the review for that episode that, that I called her when Jim was you know, or choosing the new team and we were introduced to them, that she was basically going to be the action girl. Turns out that that wasn't going to be the case for long, but certainly in this episode, I think she did have a decent showing. Let's move on to Lee Merriweather. I have tried to reach out to Lee Merriweather. I have not got a reply yet. Uh, I certainly hope to at some point. I've tried a couple of times. Never know when it's going to kind of come to fruition. One thing that I found with contacting the cast, it really was a matter of luck, frankly, that I think I got, I even got a hold of Peter Lupus. Those who are still with us, they it's kind of, they kind of fall into one of two categories i think except for perhaps mr lupus there are some who have just basically come right away they're not involved in hollywood anymore with hollywood they're not involved in acting anymore and they basically moved on with their lives there are some of those terry markwell is a good example and there are some who are still active and they, they 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 do have names they are known they could still perform if they wanted to or you know they, they obviously want to pick their spots for it and that makes it more complicated because you know they have agents and other people who are involved as kind of gatekeepers to reach them so that also makes things different I don't quite know where Lee Merriweather stands with that, and, you know, stay tuned. It remains to be seen. Surprisingly, Lee Merriweather was not on the show as much as you may think. IMDb has her listed as being in eight episodes, which I guess is technically true. However, one of those episodes was a two-parter, uh, The Bunker from Season 3, and one of them was a three-parter, The Falcon from Season 4. So overall, uh, like I said, not as much as you would think. So Lee Merriweather's best roles in ascending order, going from the bottom to the top. There was her role in The Bunker, Season 3, Episode 19. Technically, she's not an agent, although it could be argued that she did play Cinnamon Carter as part of the episode. Cinnamon described as her character, Anna Rojak. 
that it's a bit of a gray area, but I am going to point it out that she's the only actress or actor, I think, who played a role, uh, you know, as a guest and then actually became an agent as part of the, the, uh, the main team. Next would come, and it's interesting that this actually goes in chronological order, in episode order, but it also, you know, kind of shows, you know, her progress within the show. Then she came back for season four, episode two, The Numbers Game. Here she had a decent role for her as the nurse and as kind of a lookout for the IMF as they're doing their various tasks. But again, that's a role that she fills just because she happens to be a woman. Then we move on. She reappears in episode seven of season four, Submarine, one of the best episodes ever. Here, I would classify her as an above average placeholder. She has a role within the episode, a fitting role for a woman to play, and she is a part of the team, an important part of the, of the mission, but really, I would characterize her best as an above average placeholder, just because of the nature of the mission. Her next episode was season four, episode nine, Robot, a much better role, more in kind of the vein of Cinnamon Carter. You know, she does a lot of work as a foreign agent, as part of the mission. This episode is quite heavy on the actual story and the plot and is more of a showcase for Leonard Nimoy, who plays so many roles in this episode. You know, her, her work is overshadowed a little bit. Everybody's work is overshadowed a little bit, except maybe for, uh, for, for Jim Phelps. But again, she's got a pretty decent outing here as part of the team and fitting for the story. But definitely Lee Merriweather's best role on the show was the three-part episode, The Falcon. Season 4, episodes 14 through 16. Here she's really good as Madame Vinsky, who is the, you know, part of the magic show that the IMF is putting on as part of the mission. She really makes this one a good Power of Five episode. And here it seems to gel so well with the main cast. Probably just the way her role is written. I have a feeling, although I don't know, know this for sure, that this was a script that was kind of probably starting in development back in season three, and they figured that Barbara Bain could fit this role. However, Lee Merriweather takes this one and really runs it for a touchdown. She's really believable in this one, and this is definitely her best work on the show. Moving on to the next lady on the list, and that would be Barbara Anderson who filled in for Linda Day George when she was on maternity leave towards the beginning of season seven. Barb Anderson is basically retired and unreachable since the 1990s. She's another one of those who's basically left the, uh, the world of acting and entertainment to focus on her family. More power to her, that's great. And I really, do, despite lots of digging, have had no success in finding any way to contact her. She actually appeared in seven episodes in all. Two of them were kind of what I would classify as I did uh, for a couple of the other episodes uh, that I've already mentioned as an above average placeholder. One of those would be from season seven. These are all from season seven. Episode 10, Ultimatum. She's an above average placeholder as Jim's female sidekick to keep the plot moving, and that's about it. Then there was also episode eight called Movie. It's a good role for her. She plays the lead role in a movie for the IMF to kind of cover their presence uh, in terms of uh, what they have to do to complete this particular mission. Looking back though, she's not as featured as it first seemed. And this is one where she's just kind of the female agent because a woman is needed for that particular role. If I were to pick uh, Barb Anderson's best five roles out of the seven, number five I would say would be episode nine, which was called Hit. She has a decent outing here as Sally Bukic, who pretends to be a friend to the villain's ex-girlfriend who he killed. And she helps to get the plot moving. This is one of those but then basically kind of disappears towards the end and just becomes a placeholder. 
After that, I would say that the next better one would be episode six, which is called Cocaine. This is another decent outing for her. Her acting in this is great, where she plays a drug addict, somebody who's totally strung out as part of the main plot of The Trap for the antagonist, Joe Conrad, who's played by William Shatner. And she does get uh, to do a little bit more towards the end of the scene, uh, towards the end of the episode, I should say, in some scenes later on. Above that, at number three, I would say episode one of season seven. That would be called Break. She has a very key role there as the girlfriend of one of the antagonists, Press Allen, to stir the pot with him uh, for the plot to proceed at some very, very key times. And this was a great way to introduce her to the show. Number two for Barb Anderson would be The Deal, episode three from season seven. She has a very, very important role here because the mission requires the IMF to do some work with and on by Marcy Carpenter, played by Lana Wood, requiring a woman to do some of the work. And that uh, pushes the plot forward to get some of the antagonists to move in the direction that the IMF needs. And she was really, really good in this one as well. But Barbara Anderson's best role was definitely episode five, which was called TOD5. She uh, is basically the MVP of this episode as a waitress who calls herself Charlene. She pushes the target, Gordon Holt, through the steps needed to complete the mission where they're looking for an organization that is trying to develop a bioterrorist weapon. And, uh, and, and, and she was absolutely fantastic in this one. You know, shades of some of the, uh, the, the best episodes of some of the other ladies who will be coming later on in the list. So I think I'm going to end this one here, talking about the, uh, the three ladies who didn't quite make it a full season. And I'm going to be moving on to the rest of them. I'll try to make individual uh, videos for them, or perhaps there might be one or two that I may have to combine. I'm not sure. So stay tuned uh, for, for that and other uh, review videos to come. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. Please like this um, review video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I appreciate the increase in uh, subscriptions, and I think it is definitely helping uh, the channel. And also, please, I'm looking forward to more and more of your comments as time goes on. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you next time.